All right. I believe we are live. Don't panic. Don't panic if you are an early attender of the live stream. Lisa will be here momentarily. Um, so don't panic. She's she's fine. Everything's good. Uh, I'm going to tell you why she's not here in just a minute. Uh, and I'm also going to tell you a fun story that's going to be fun for you, but definitely not fun for me. But hey, there we go. Tim Russell already coming in with the audio video good along with the Zen Ginger. Thank you all so much for that. I saw something. The very first chat that was put up uh, D from Brooklyn. That's a name I recognize. Are you going? Are you guys going to the NEC convention this weekend? I don't know what that is. So, does that answer your question? <laughs> uh, I didn't know of any conventions going on this weekend. But even if I did know of one, um, our granddaughter's birthday party is this weekend. So I'm sorry, but that has to take priority over anything ref uh, fish related. So. Good Lord, 308,549,407,597 and, uh, well, it was 500 and something trillion cats watching. Good Lord, Curtis, you're hitting me with some numbers this morning that I can't even say. So listen, uh, Lisa's going to be in here in a minute. She's not here because uh, Jason Adams and I were recording podcasts all day today. Um, we were supposed to start early, but we didn't start late. And the reason why we didn't start till late. And the reason why is kind of funny. Uh, my internet shocker, right? Uh, my internet situation is when I'm going to do something out here that involves the internet, I have to run a cable out here, a cat six cable. I run it 300 feet from the house to here. Well, we don't normally record our podcast. Oh, you don't know about the podcast, the Tank Talk podcast. Sorry about that. Make sure everybody knows what I'm talking about here. The Tank Talk podcast that uploads every Monday on the Tank Talk podcast channel, as well as all your podcasting platforms where Jason Adams, the professor, and I talk all things aquariums. Uh, the response to this podcast has been overwhelming. Thank you all so much for that. We have so much fun doing it. Um, so... I had a problem that was unavoidable. I could not start doing the podcast on time because the trash guy was coming today. We have a dumpster by our barn that we use for the business, keepfishkeeping.com, yet another shameless plug. And that trash guy comes once every two weeks. And it's one of those trucks that picks the dumpster up and pours it out. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, well, he was coming today, and if he came while we were doing our podcast recording, he would erode right over our cable. And I have no other way of getting it to the house other than running it across the driveway. So we had to wait until the trash guy came. And then once he came, I ran the wire, we started the podcast, and we were all good. Well, also while Jason and I were recording a podcast... We got a huge shipment in from Tropica. The plants are normally my thing. I mean, I, I handle the maintenance of the plant tanks. I handle the packing of the plants. I handle the, the care for the plants and also the inventory and the ordering and all that kind of stuff. Lisa handles everything else as far as our inventory goes, but I handle the plants. And it's not that she's not capable. It's just that that's how we have things divvied up. So... I got done recording podcasts with Jason at about 6.30. Well, I've got this at 8 o'clock. So I go down to the barn, and Lisa's in there, and I realize the Tropica order arrived today. And so I'm like, okay. I knew it was coming. It wasn't a surprise. So I'm like, all right, well, let me start putting this, to, to putting this away. She says, nope, you know what? I got your dinner. It's in there in the house. I got this. You go handle, you go have dinner and then go get ready for the live stream. I'll put these plants away. And when I'm done, I'll come and join you on the podcast, on the live stream. I'm sorry. I'm all confused today. So that's how amazing my wife is. Uh, she's doing my work for me today. 
And, uh, and I couldn't be more lucky than I am. However, I do have to tell you about something. I can't blame my wife. It's not her fault. She's a wonderful person, and I'm so lucky to have her. But there is something that involves her that's not so good that I wanted to talk to you about while uh, we're waiting for her to show up. But while we do that, I want to welcome Sue Ann and Velvet Enigma. Welcome to the team. Uh, became members. We're glad to have you. Be sure to watch the extra video that's being put up for you on Sunday. Uh, it's not just for you. It's for all members, but it's only for members. So it is kind of just for you. Uh, so let me tell you a little story about your boy and your girl who's not here yet losing about $12,000 and quite literally dumping that $12,000 into the dirt. If you are a uh, subscriber to the wildly popular Money Pit channel, which only has three videos on it, I did a video about this on Sunday. Uh, you're welcome to go and watch that. The video is a lot of fun. I enjoyed it very much. I did not know I was going to make a video about this, but, uh, but I did, and it was fun. And it involves this fish house. So this is why it applies to the, uh, the, the fish keeping world. Hey, John, your 360 looks so good. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for noticing that. It does look good, doesn't it? Did a lot of major work on that tank. And uh, I want to I wanna make an offer to all of you. The first one is going to get uh, extra bonus points. Can anyone, this is not hard to see. It's right there in front of your face. Can anyone point out the significant flaw with that tank right now? That I'm going to have a lot of fun addressing. And as, some, as soon as somebody figures it out, I will make sure I uh, recognize that person and then talk about how I'm going to correct it. But listen, my wife is the person in our relationship that handles our bills. Um, we make the money together. She spends the money on the bills for the household and the business and all of that. She's our money person. And normally, when you have a money person in the household, one of the people that handles the money, or the person that handles the money, um, that person's going to gripe about certain bills. The level is off. Yes, thank you. No water flow. How dare you? You know how much water's moving through there? Uh, it is, uh, yeah, it's definitely the level is off there. Thank you, uh, Zen Ginger. Shocker. Zen Ginger is the one that noticed it. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so my wife handles the bills. And when we got the pond put in, she complained. Oh, my Lord, the water bill was so high when we got the, the pond. And I'm like, yeah, of course it was. You know, we had to fill up a 1,500-gallon pond twice. So I wasn't shocked about that. Well, you know, if you follow along with this channel, it's been, I, I don't even know. When did we get the pond put in? I don't even know when it was. You would think I would know that. Um, it's probably been eight months. I don't know. I think it was in like September that we got it put in. Uh, missing fish. No, I'm not missing any fish in there. How dare you? They're all in there. <laughs> it is the lean. You see the water level is lower here than it is over here? Yeah. Again, we're going to discuss that in a second. Uh, and y'all need to stop saying water flow because daggone it, if I got in there right now, it would blow me away. The water is flowing so much. There's plenty of flow in there. You just can't see it. Anyway, listen, come on. Stop getting off track here, John. Stop looking at the chat. She's griping about the water bill. And I'm, I'm like, whatever. She says it a couple more times throughout the months uh water bills high and i'm like what do you want me to do you know ponds the water evaporates out of ponds really fast i've i've got to got to fill it up i got to put about that much water in the pond every week it's not that big of a deal but then it hits her just how 
steep our water bills are uh, when she has a conversation with one of our neighbors, ran into our neighbor at the grocery store. Yes, you're more likely to run into our neighbors at the grocery store than you are in the front yard because they're so far away. Has a conversation with the um, neighbor and she tells me about this conversation. She, she says, I was having a conversation with those people and they said their water bill is normally like $46 a month. And I was like, all right, well, what's ours? She said, oh, I've been telling you ours is a problem. Ours is about 800 to a thousand dollars a month it's a good thing that she's the only person that was around me at the time because if there was somebody that i didn't like around me i probably would have taken my anger out on that person i could not i i was shocked when she said that now, in her defense, I'm being silly here talking about her in this way. She didn't know that water just wasn't expensive in North Carolina. Our water bills in Virginia were like three or $400 a month. We had eight people living in our house. We had all these aquariums. We've added a few, but we had the aquariums. We had a bunch of people living in our house. Now, we only have two people living in our house and like two additional aquariums. There's no way. And then there's the pond, but still. There's no way it should be that high. Well, long story short, I'm not going to spoil the video. I want everybody to go over and watch that video on uh, that I put up on Sunday on the Money Pit channel. I saw the Zen Ginger, the best moderator on all of YouTube. No disrespect to anybody else. We appreciate all of y'all. But y'all know that Zen is just at a different langle, a different level. Langle? Uh, we had pretty high water bills in Virginia. So when we moved down here and they were at 800 a month, she didn't know that that wasn't normal. If she had said something to me back then, Hey, our water bills, $800 a month. What the heck? I'd have been like, Oh no, that's not, that can't be, can't be right. No way. Uh, but I don't pay. I'm not that guy that's monitoring the money every night. If I was the one that handled the bills, I would do it, but she handles the money. I don't worry about it. I trust her. She's not going to blow the money on things other than cats. So, uh, you know, it was not something that I ever checked up on. Um, so, you know, that's my defense for her. She didn't know. But when she heard what our neighbors pay, she knew and told me. And I spent the entire day on Sunday diagnosing this water leak. And it does involve this fish house. So it's not like it's entirely not fish related. Uh, but, you know, the very short version of the story is, again, I'm not going to spoil it because it's, it's actually kind of a suspenseful video wondering where this leak is coming from. Um, we have three buildings on our property that all have water in them. There's this building, there's the house, and there's the barn. And there's underground, obviously, you don't run these up on poles. <laughs> There's underground water supply lines that run to all three of those buildings. And I, by myself, had to start digging and start hunting and start figuring out where this leak was. Uh, I determined pretty quickly that it was underground. Uh, the leak was underground. And um, it was one of the least fun days of my life. But we did get the problem... We, we, we figured out the problem and we resolved the problem. I'm not going to tell you it's fixed, but it's resolved for now. And uh, I see Fish Room Fever is in here with us, uh, which I have not seen that name in a very long time. He's recently moved to a larger property that has multiple buildings on it. So I'm sure he can sympathize with these types of scenarios because when you have we're on five acres. It's not like we live on this big, massive estate, but I had no idea what was going to come with five acres. Ooh, you get a windstorm and then it's, the whole property is full of sticks and it's, it's just, you know, this is what it is. This is life. But, uh, but yeah, that was my Sunday. I did not enjoy that at all. And I particularly didn't enjoy it because Saturday I got my lawnmower stuck in the mud 
Why'd you run it through the mud, John? Because I didn't know it was mud. What do you think? I'm a dummy? I am a dummy, but not that much of a dummy. I got my lawnmower stuck and then uh, spent the rest of the entire weekend diagnosing that water issue. Uh, but anyway, did a video about it. It's a lot of fun. You should check it out. Uh, this tank behind me. I did a, uh, a significant amount of maintenance on it uh, Tuesday. Tuesday. And uh, it, it's looking really good. But there are two issues that need to be resolved with this tank. And the first is the one that you can see right in front of your eyes. It is not hiding from anybody. Um, there is definitely a lean. And I... You haven't seen it in the past, have you? Because I haven't. Uh, I mean, it... it uh, listen. The tank is not sinking. It's on concrete. But I don't know why that leak... Or that leak. That uh, lean in the tank is, uh, it, I don't know why that's happening. It was leaning a little bit, not leaning, but it's the floor's not level. So I shouldn't say it's leaning. It was a little out of level when we first moved in, obviously, and I shimmed it. Uh, it's shimmed over on this side to raise it up a little bit. Uh, Wiff's World was here. Eric Furlow was here. We were here till three o'clock in the morning, getting these tanks all filled up. And, uh, you know, we put levels on it and we leveled it out and got it good. But uh, it's never been perfect since we've lived here. But now, for some reason, it's something that's become visible. So I'm going to have to I'm going to have to take that water. I'm going to probably have to drain it completely. Uh, there's no probably. I'm going to have to drain it completely down. Take the fish out, which I got to tell you, I know this is going to be a shocker. Um, Taking those fish out of this tank is not fun at all. <laughs> they're, they're rather large, especially the bikers, because we've got 12 inch nets and they don't they don't like to uh, they don't like to to go into those little nets. So that's not fun to take them out, but got to do it. And uh, what I'm going to end up doing, I have. It's a pry bar, but it's one of those pry bars that's made for ripping up hardwood floors. I've used this tool for so many things you wouldn't even believe, but I bought it for removing the floors in this building. Uh, it's a really heavy pry bar, but the end of the pry bar stick up like this so that you can rest it on a floor joist and pop up hardwood floors. If you go back to May of 2022 on this channel, on the video where I got this concrete put in, which might have only been put up for members, I'm not certain. Um, you'll see me using that, or you actually see my son using that tool. Um, that tool has come in handy so many times since then, like prying out tree roots out of the ground that are sticking up out of the driveway and stuff like that. It's a very handy tool. I'm gonna take that after draining this, because it's just me, and I'm gonna use that to, to slightly lift it up and then uh, maybe be able to get Lisa to delicately slide some shims in there, um, shim it all the way down, you know, because you can't just put them on the end because that would put way too much stress on the, uh, on the frame itself. So we'll put multiple shims in there, get it all leveled out, and then fill it back up again. And while I'm doing that, since everything will be empty, I'm going to solve another issue with that tank. Uh, the pumps that are in this tank um, running the sump system are five years old and they ain't pumping the way I want them to pump. So I called up one of my favorite people on the planet. I called up Jay Wilson and, uh, listen folks, I'm such a lucky guy. Okay. I know that I don't need people to tell me that. I'm aware of how lucky I am not only to live this life that I live, be married to the person I'm married to, to have friends like I have, call up Jay, because Jay is the pump guy, right? And I said, Jay, uh, how's your face doing? Is it do Okay, good. Because, uh, you know, I damaged his face and sent him to the emergency room. I said, I got a question. I got a 360-gallon tank that I want to turn over at least four times an hour. I need two pumps for it. What pumps should I buy? And he's very clever. He's very smart. 
he was like, you know what? I'm in the middle of something. I'm going to get back to you. I'll, I'll let you know. I'm like, you know this stuff off the top of your head. Why can't you just tell me? I'll get back to you. Well, two days later, these pumps show up at my door. So that's how lucky I am. I'm a lucky guy. Uh, what am I supposed to tell you? Uh, I'm not going to deny that. I'm definitely lucky there. Uh, so I am going to replace the pumps in here and level the tank out. And, uh, and I'm going to do a sump maintenance while I'm in there. Might as well. But uh, I don't think it's something. I mean, maybe it's video worthy because of the leaning. Might be something that's worthy of a video. Yeah. It's worthy of a video. Why? Because the pumps. Come on. If Jay is going to be nice enough to send me pumps like that, uh, of course, I'm going to do a video about that. So, yeah, that'll be a video coming out uh, soon. Is it going to be by next Thursday? Uh, probably not. I don't know. Um, but I want to get that straightened out and get the new pumps in there, get a nice little service done on it. And uh, the fight will never end with that tank. But looks pretty daggone good right now, doesn't it? Minus the, you know, the little sag here. I see somebody in the uh, chat right now that I apologize, Gordon. I've never seen you in here before. Maybe you've been in here and I just haven't seen it. Aquarium Talk TV, my new friend from Canada, uh, was talking to the other night. He's going to be with me at the Fins and Fury event in August, along with Jay Wilson. Um, he's from up there in Canada. He's not fighting or anything, uh, but he's going to be there ringside. Jay and I will be commentating the event, so it's going to be a lot of fun. If you don't know about that, uh, link is in the description of this. I left it up from last week, and uh, you can buy tickets for the live event in New York in August or the pay-per-view and I'll be commentating the fights up there. The main event is the King of DIY versus Rod from Predatory Fins. Yeah, I know Rod's a really big guy, but Joey's Canadian. So there you go. It's a wash. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, cool to see you in here, brother. I haven't seen you in here before, but again, maybe you've been in here and I just haven't seen you because I don't look at the chat much because it distracts me way too much. And hey, guess what? DeMars did what DeMars does. What does he do every single week? He gifts memberships, 10 of them tonight. So Caitlin, Christina, Hip Hop Hillbilly, uh, Mr. Skippity Doodah, Debbie, Dave, Guppy Town Aquatics, Cheryl, new friends, Silver Creeks Wildlife, all got free channel memberships because of DeMars. How about that? Isn't that something? That's special. I know I sounded like Bob Ross right there when I said, isn't that something? But then Blood Screen also came in with his or her, I'm not sure, uh, weekly gifted membership. Thank you so much to that uh, for that. I can't see, and I'm not going to waste y'all's time trying to search for who it was that received that membership. Uh, and then Kalen Shepard said something. What did he say? Greetings from one of your fans. Well, hello. <laughs> greetings to you my friend listen y'all are starting to make me mad now because everybody's talking about the flow in this tank well uh, you were talking about this a while ago you're not talking about it now but uh that is what we're going to be addressing with those pumps right there they're adjustable uh it's going to be like like the oscars are going to be like ah, what have you done uh, that's going to be interesting. But uh, yeah, I mean, the flow is fine. It's not perfect. It's fine. Uh, you might not see it on camera. But I have both of the uh, outputs pointing down and I don't have any circulation pumps in there. So if you see, I got a uh, return there and a return there. Pointing to things that are behind me on camera is a lot harder than you think. You laugh at me every time I do this, but it's not easy to do. So cut me some slack. There's a return here and a return here. They both point like this way. So they're not pointing up to cause these big ripples in the water or anything like that. Um, you know, if I knew Jay was going to send me a bunch of stuff, I'd have been like, hey, what about some circulation pumps too? But I'm not trying to take advantage of anybody. Um, oh, it was 
Black Saber seventy nine got the membership from um, from uh, Blood Screen. Jeez, sorry, Blood Screen. This is hard to do when you're by yourself. Uh, any shot of the Space Echo coming back in stock? There's a shot, but there's also a shot that there might be a different one. But I can't talk about that because uh, it's top secret, but could be coming soon. Those monster tanks are jo no joke. Couldn't be me. Monster tanks. I've got three 240s, a 300, which is Lisa's, and I don't do anything with it. It's hers. And this 360, and they are easier to take care of than any of the other tanks in this fish house. Yeah. I mean, when things go wrong in a tank that size, they grow, they go wrong hard <laughs> and it sucks when you have to fix something like this. It's a major ordeal. You got to get equipment involved to lift the thing up because the daggone thing with the stand weighs like 900 pounds bone dry. So it's not easy to deal with when stuff like that happens. But from a maintenance standpoint, take monster tanks over little tanks all day long they are way 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 easier uh, and if you think about it it makes sense it's a lot harder to foul up that much water than it is this much water makes sense right i mean even big dogs like these the bikers poops are huge it's it's kind of offensive how big their poops are and I've got a common pleco that's chilling right here. He's like big. I don't know how big he is. Uh, there, he lays brown spaghetti noodles all over the substrate of this tank. It's ridiculous. So you do have to deal with that when you're keeping larger fish. But uh, yeah, as far as maintaining the water, it's a piece of cake. I didn't put him away. So our superstar has arrived. Hope you haven't been listening. <laughs> I didn't say anything bad. You don't have. You can't be mad. What is all that? It's my food from my fish. Oh, so our superstar is here. That looks like a really big bag. Yeah, it's mine. Okay. Oh. Let me add you to the mix here. I don't know if she's in focus. Uh, nope. I don't. Oh, zoomed way in on you. All right. So we usually do this about 30 seconds prior to the stream starting but am i on you are on you got to move that way slightly oh. there you go you're good you're good oh, here. Yeah. Hello. i told the story of why you were not here because you're such a fantastic person putting the plants away for yeah. me yeah uh, there's somewhere out just because you know walking over here and everything so we had like <laughs> forty-four thousand people watching and then when they saw it wasn't me it went down to like 300 i don't think so and uh <laughs> i don't know if we'll ever get those people Maybe back because they think it's just me on the stream tonight but oh my goodness you didn't feed the cats did you no no okay baby kitty <laughs> so anyway i've lost my train of thought completely i was talking about the uh the tank behind me being oh, crooked yeah. and the new pumps for the yeah, tank why is the water down i don't know i i just noticed that huh how it's about not that the flow is it <laughs> you're such an idiot <laughs> <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> baby kitty any videos on the electric blue akaras or still working on it oh uh, is that this video i'm gonna go feed the cats real quick <laughs> okay that's probably a good idea um we don't have a specific video on electric blue Akaras, but we do have a video coming up either this Sunday or next Sunday. Not sure which one it was where they are mentioned in a very, very cool video that uh, that I think you all are going to like. So be on the lookout for that. But I, we don't have a video specifically about electric blue Akaras. It'd be an easy video to do, though, because those are some amazing fish. Bloodscreen says new members should check out the KG Discord channel. Yes, you definitely should. I need to get on that Discord a lot more than I do. It's it's just, you know, there's only so many hours of the day. 
And when you got tanks that are crooked and 87 cats that Lisa's taking cats to the vet every week and you got thousand dollar water bills and you know it's rough you got to report record podcasts it's uh you know it's it's tough it's tough to get in there as much as i'd like you got that all straightened out did carl go out there yeah i didn't see him all right now i'm back back in focus (laughs) <laughs> so you were totally fibbing when you said you weren't listening. You heard all about I, the flow and the... Uh, I, I kind of was listening. Um, the last maybe couple minutes I didn't hear because I was walking over. My hands are full. It's windy out. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> just trying to get over here. So, I no, I wasn't listening to everything. Maybe the first 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> the cat's chocolate starfish was all up in the camera. Yeah, baby kitty likes to do that. She does. She <laughs> likes to uh, to get a full rectal rectal exam uh, when she's on video. She, speaking of that, <laughs> I've had to go to the vet. Let's see, I've had three appointments with the cats in the last two weeks. Uh, the one with Honey, because her paws got messed up, and then I took two cats to get fixed. Uh, to get neutered and then yesterday poor batman oh he's a mess so he he had to go <sighs> recommendation where i can purchase a larger tank have a 75 trying to get a 125 or bigger without spending a thousand dollars i can't find them anywhere um your best bet is one of the big box pet stores i don't know what they go for now i mean i remember when they were the box would be 350 by itself Mm, and that's not bad for a 125 i don't care what anybody says that's not bad it might be double that now because you know everything's double now but you know the 125s you only want to spend a thousand dollars or less i don't blame you times are tough um you that basically means you cannot go custom um so you know you're going to go with one of the mass produced major manufacturers marine land top fin something like that aquion mm. and uh they sell those at the big box stores or you, if you have a local mom and pop they can usually get them for you uh a lot of mom and pops i know mark keeps them up there if you live near virginia beach go to aquariums unlimited i think he's always got 125s he uh, has um now the cool thing about aquariums unlimited too uh he has this program thing or uh, credit loan thing I don't know but you can go in there and apply to um, finance a tank from him and they even do custom aquariums I knew he did that yeah so that's convenient that is that's really good I mean and it's smart I didn't even know he was doing that but that's so smart because yeah that's so smart anytime you can offer financing especially if it's not your money that you're financing that's great i mean that's that's super smart but every single time i have been in aquariums unlimited there's been a lot of glass boxes for sale that one day we went in uh, i think he said he sold like six or seven setups i was like wow that's yeah he sold a 125 one day when we were there there were people carrying it out and i was like i'm sorry too busy to help carrying it but but no i'm I'm being silly. I would have helped, but they didn't need it. They had two big giants carrying it. So right. uh, Carla have is you? from NC. She doesn't like snow. Oh, yeah. The poor thing. Oh, it did it snow up there. Jason said it was snowing in the Chicago area for two days in a row. I miss snow. I don't I miss snow. Like right now, I am so hot. I ugh. It's funny, too, because this week when it got really warm and we went to, like, the post office, we went to a couple of places, everybody's like, yeah, it's hot. I love yep. it. And I'm like, oh, I hate this. I should, I feel like I was meant to live in the north, like cold weather. Well, if you ever want a divorce, that's where you should go because you know I, I won't yeah, follow you there. De- definitely. I will definitely go north. If we divorce. Local Pet Smart has a 125 <laughs> gallon tank stand, lid, and light for $1,000. That's, uh, I mean, that's way higher than I remember it being. But then again, I haven't 
looked to buy a 125 in a long time. It's probably been 20 years. Mm -hmm. So, well, maybe not 20 years, but 10 years anyway. Yeah. Uh, so 20. to me, that <laughs> sounds like a reasonable deal. What's that I'm hitting my foot on? Oh, it's the microphone stand. Um, I, I don't think that's an unreasonable deal. If you were going to buy a, a 125 gallon custom with a stand and everything, that you'd would be, be expensive. Yeah, you'd be paying probably double that. But you know what? You get thicker glass, you get better frames, you get a significantly better stand. Um, is it worth that extra money? Yeah. Guaranteed for life? Sure. Of course, it's it's worthy of that extra money, but that's it's hard to do, and I get it. Have you talked about the fight yet? Uh, just barely, I because Gordon's in here. I'm, I mentioned him. Did you say how I volunteered to fight Joey? I, I did not, but you're more than yeah. welcome to tell I that story. I volunteered. I was like, I'll, I'll fight you, Joey. <laughs> I ain't scared. And then I tried to volunteer you to fight somebody. I was like, I got your back. I <laughs> got so commentate. scared. I, I'm, I'm being honest with you. I got so scared because I, I was pretty confident Boss Aquatics wanted to fight me. <laughs> and he's way younger than me and in way better shape than me. And even if he wasn't younger than me and in better shape than me, probably could still kick my butt. I am <laughs> not interested in fighting that man. But That's funny. I went on. Joey did a live stream. What day was on it? On Fins and Fury. It was Monday? Monday. Yeah, it was like a, I think it was just like a random yeah. streaming. I went on that stream with him and, and Gordon, Aquarium TV, Aquarium, why am I, there's so many Aquarium tape and Aquarium TV, Aquarium. Yeah. To, uh, okay, I'm terrible. But he was on there. Uh, aquarium SE Aquatics TV. was on there. Aquarium Talk TV. Yes, that's what I said. SC Aquatics was on there. Uh, Troy from Cichlid Bros was on there. Lucas, Lucas. Bretz was on it. And then Boss came in. And they don't, they don't have a fight uh, announced for him yet. But they announced him as a fighter. And he was like, I don't care. I'll fight KG. I said, <laughs> you will not. <laughs> You're half my age, first of all, youngster. And second of all, no, I refuse. I told you I had your back. Well, that, that would make it a little less scary, but, uh, but yeah, I, no thanks. I, I'll be happy to consume the fight and talk all about it on the microphone well, from ringside. Well, I did say at the end of that stream that I'm looking forward to talking a bunch of crap about the losers from the fight on a live stream afterwards. So I hope that was enough motivation for somebody to win. I think that's terrible, <laughs> and I think you'll be doing that live stream yourself that night. Um, listen. And I, yeah, it, it, I said that in fun because I have so much respect for anybody that's going to put their body in that position to get up there and fight. Whether you win or lose, you have my respect because John won't do it. I will not do it. No. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, that I got too much on the line. I can't be laid up for a long time like I would be after getting into a sanctioned fight. No, I, I can't do it. That's not for me. Plus, I'm, I'm not a fighter. I, I mean, you got to work hard to get me to want to fight you. And, uh, you know, just getting in the ring and saying I'll fight you doesn't do it for me. I'm not uh, not interested in it, but I'm definitely interested in watching. That's going to be fun. Um, There's a few. Well. A couple people I'd love to see get in there and fight. Oh, shut up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, I, whatever. What? Who? I, I don't have to say names. I can just say I wouldn't mind seeing them fight and lose. But that's okay. Okay. We can move on. All right. Angry Lisa's out tonight. Sorry, everybody. It's been okay. a long day. I'm tired. Maybe I should have <laughs> done this one by myself. I'm uh, just kidding. I'm just no. kidding. <laughs> um, but one of the things that I learned about this fight coming up, um, I was not aware of this. This guy is my friend. I remember a few years ago, he's the only guy that called me on my birthday. My yeah. own brother didn't even call me on I my birthday. I remember you were so ha happy about that when he called. Eric Triplett, who is the pond digger, is fighting. Um, and I didn't realize that Eric is 55 years old. Yeah, that's shocking. 
fucking. He first of all, he looks amazing for 55, and he's going to be getting in the ring fighting. I, it makes me feel like a total schmuck. But uh, hey, I'm just going to say it right here as a commentator. I'm supposed to say biased. Stay biased. I'm supposed to say non non biased. I'm so. Can I, you want me to use can your? Can you words say for it you? for me? Yeah, you're supposed to not take sides of anybody you're supposed to be neutral very neutral right about the whole thing but i'm saying it right now whoever's fighting eric triplett i will be rooting against you i'm sorry because eric's 55 i'm gonna be 50 at that point and you're gonna be married to an old man and uh i will yeah. i will not root against eric i don't even know who he's fighting um, but whoever he is, I hope he loses. Oh, boss is in here talking crap. No, he's not. Yeah, he is. He said he wants to fight you. <laughs> he said it, and he was serious, too. He said, I'll fight KG. I don't care. <laughs> I said, you will do no such thing. <laughs> he's saying the fight's still on the table. No, it's, it's not, it's not going to happen. Uh, I will enjoy watching whoever you do fight. Uh, will, wa- I will enjoy watching you fight whoever you fight. But it ain't going to be me. <laughs> I'll be the one holding the microphone, interviewing you afterwards, saying, hey, how do you feel? That'll be me. Oh, that's so funny. Not going to be me in there in the headgear or getting pounded on. No. Oh, oh speaking of headgear, it's so funny. The road, Virginia Road out here. So I was driving down. just give people our address? Whatever. <laughs> so I'm driving down the road today, and there's this kid on a bike. He was probably, in the middle of the road. No, he was like maybe 12 or 13. He's riding a bike with a motorcycle helmet on. I was oh. like, dang. <laughs> oh, that's funny. It was funny. But anyways, Tim Russell, I hope you're not related to them. <laughs> Sorry. Tim's like, that was me. <laughs> When are you going to do a video on the cycling a tank? Oh, geez. That's, uh, let's see, 2012, 2015, 2019. Uh, we've done quite a few there, Jacob Small. Uh, the, the best one to watch is titled The Most Important Aquarium Video Ever Made. Yeah. That's the title of it. Uh, watch that one. I'm going to toot my own horn on this one. I'm not disrespecting any other YouTubers. All I'm saying is I don't think there's a better video on the internet explaining the cycling process and it got the stamp of approval from the professor. So we know it's good. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's the one to watch. Watching your channel has got me in the start of the hobby. I'm currently finishing cycling my first 40 gallon tank planted. Do you recommend running CO2 or a decent liquid fertilizer? The answer you get from me is going to be very different from the answer that you get from Lisa. Um, however, I don't think either one of them are wrong. I think this it is, just depends on what plants you get and what kind of lighting you have. And This is what the answer is for you, okay? Uh, you just started in the hobby, I, I'm assuming, and you're getting your tank set up and getting it cycled and doing all of that. I wouldn't fool with all the fertilizer and all the uh, fertilizer is one thing, but CO2, I wouldn't fool with it. Not I yet. would leave it alone. Fertilizer. There are certain plants that are going to benefit from uh, fertilizer, liquid mm-hmm. fertilizers. There's others that really won't. Um, I'm not the foremost expert on plants, but I, I know enough to be able to tell that to you. And CO2, sure. Will plants grow better with CO2? Of course they will. But can you grow them, most of them, just fine by just performing your maintenance and doing your husbandry and keep giving them the right light cycle and making sure that there's nutrients in the water for them? You won't yeah. need any of that. So, True. you know, don't make this more complicated than it is in the very beginning of this process. Keep it simple. Start with some easy plants like Anubias. Rotala. Crips. Crips are. Oh my gosh. They're, they're so easy. easy. They're not as easy as Anubias, but Crips are great for beginners. Oh, but they're, in my opinion, I think they're one of the best rooted plants. Oh, they're one of my favorite plants by far. I'm just, I I'm not disagreeing I with that. I can't kill a Crip, so. Yeah, they're amazing plants. Um, go on our website. You don't have to order from us, but go on our website and look at everything that is, al- almost everything that's on the site. 
except we do have a few that are under the medium category and it'll say the very top of the description this is in tropica's medium category mm. uh don't try those even though they're not hard stick with the ones that are easy which is literally everything else on our website uh and you won't have any problems don't you don't need to fool with fertilizers and co2s just yet let the fish be the fertilizer and co2 just just no i want father fish to fight alex from fish tree <laughs> i mean alex is a young whippersnapper i don't i don't want to see father fish fighting <laughs> yeah i mean no, father fish he needs to just just watch <laughs> um, he needs to sit next to you and just watch yeah, I, I, I really don't. I, but you know what? He might he's he might be able to kick some ass. I mean, I, I'm just saying. I don't know. Well, I'll uh, take him. But I, I, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to see him fight either. But uh, Alex, Alex to me seems like one of those Alex, guys that just would not go down. Um, duh, he's been struck by he lightning. He got struck by lightning and he's still walking around. So. Yeah, come on now. I, I wouldn't fight Alex. I don't, is Alex in here? I'm sitting here talking about him. No, it's uh, just somebody's, uh, people are talking about people, but yeah. Alex seems like one of those guys that would have that kind of rocky mentality. You knock him down, he gets right back up again. You knock him down, he gets right back up again. I'm sorry. It's just if somebody got struck by lightning, I'm not fighting them. Yeah, they've got a, they've got a Barry Allen type of thing <laughs> to them that. But that boss aquatics, I'm not scared. <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> I guarantee you, boss would be more scared of you than he would me. I've hung out with the guy. He knows me well enough to know I ain't nobody to be scared of. Uh, but he's one of those people. He ain't scared of nobody. He was literally like, I will fight anybody. <laughs> like, really? John Cena comes along? You're going to fight him? You're funny. Well, there's a guy that is in that fight that looks like John Cena if John Cena had a beard. He's, oh, the Bearski? Yes. Oh, yeah. And there's, I heard a rumor of who's fighting him, and I'm like, wow. I'm not saying the guy can't win. I'm just saying I wouldn't want to be him. Right. I got mad respect for anybody that gets in the ring with that guy because, wow, looks like a freaking Viking. It's ridiculous. Uh, where did I leave off here? Sean, get... I'm just saying your first name because that's what I do. Gifted five memberships. Oh, Look at that. Thank you. Getting all it's the trend now is for people to donate memberships. I love it. Aquarium background tape. Thanks to you both. I have now started to allow my three rescued 17 year old cats into oh. the fish room while I do weekly maintenance. Oh, that's so cool. You know what? Do you want a fourth? <laughs> Not 17. Not what? 17 year old. Why not? We don't have any 17-year-old cats. Yeah, but I got a cat. Oh, yeah. That... We can give them four or five of those. But yeah. <laughs> uh, Sean again came in and said, I'm dialing, I'm dialing my tank size. I'm between 29 and 30. Is the extra gallon much of a difference? <laughs> uh, you, you know, an inch makes a big difference, right? But uh, mm. no. I mean, the, really, the only, one gallon is not going to be a make or break. Let me tell you this, Sean. There is not a fish out there that I would say, oh, that, that fish is perfect for a 30-gallon. There's no way I'd put them in a 29. No. Any fish that can go in a 29 can go in a 30. Right. Pick whichever one fits your area better, and you'll be good. Then he came in and said, I hope Father Fish isn't fighting anybody. That's my man. <laughs> right. I agree. <laughs> How many angelfish, how dare you, fight fight life nation oh he said just kidding okay good job good job well <laughs> done how many angel fish can i fit in a just kidding i was about to say how dare you start your question with how many uh big fan guys real question my fish keep hanging out near the top of my tank is this a sign of stress should i be worried what should i do are they at the top of the tank going yep don't, don't never that do that again never do that again People are going to meme that and they're going to say, look, look, no, just don't do that again. Was it funny looking? I don't care. 
<laughs> Can someone tell her why she should not be doing that? But anyway, she is right. Is uh, is the fish up at the top gasping? I was gasping? just mimicking a fish gasping for air at the top of a tank because that would be a problem. Or if you see someone doing what I just did. <laughs> <laughs> Please nobody clip that and make a meme out of it. Come on. The only person that's done something like that is Bob. And the, it's always me. Has he done one of you? Pretty sure it was me. I don't remember. And it was funny. Bob doesn't do stuff like that anymore since he got a girlfriend. He's no, a lot nicer person now. It's a now. wife now, John. Give what? it the times. They Are got they married? married. What? Did they? I think I congratulated him on that. God, where, and the, I, where the heck have you been? Recording podcasts. I'm just out of touch. Uh, absolutely fight life nation. Uh, that's definitely time to sign to send, uh, send out the alarm bells. So listen, here's the best analogy that I like to use. If you were in a room that was filling up with smoke and you saw a window over there and the window was cracked that much, what would you do? You would go over to that window because the room's filling up with smoke. You can't breathe very well. You would go to that window and you would do exactly what those fish are doing. Why? Because you'd be trying to get clean air from outside. What's happening is your aquarium's probably filling up with ammonia, which is the equivalent of the aquarium filling up with smoke. Um, and so your fish are up at the top because that's their closest access to oxygen because uh, ammonia is le uh, burning his gills or her gills. So yes, you should be concerned. Uh, you should immediately, right now, don't even think about it. Do a 50% water change. I know people like Bob Steenfot hate when people say, first thing, first thing you gotta do is a water change. Well, even in this scenario, he would agree that when you have an ammonia spike like this, like you probably have ammonia or nitrate, nitrite spike, the first thing you need to do is get half of that water in, get it replaced with clean water, and make sure you dechlorinate with either Fritz Complete Preferred or Seachem Prime because they will detoxify ammonia and get your fish through this. Then you go watch the same video that uh, I referred that other person to, the most important aquarium video ever made. I'm very proud of that video, and that'll explain what you need to do moving forward. Matthew Cummings, I want Father Fish to... Oh, already read that one. Yeah, we already poo-pooed that one because... Uh, we sure did get a lot of members. Did you say thank you? I did. Oh. I, I mean, unless some have popped up that I haven't seen. Uh, Techno Gatsby, where do you stand on 180-gallon acrylic versus glass tanks? Hmm. Okay, full transparency. We don't own any acrylic tanks except for the beta tanks, uh, it, but... The reason we don't have any acrylic tanks is not because we don't don't like acrylic tanks. I don't have any thing against acrylic tanks at all. Um, I think in certain circumstances, acrylic's really the only option for you know certain size tanks. 180s, no, you can go either way. I mean, I don't particularly have. I don't. I don't have any. I don't. I'm not going to say it one way or the other. Hmm. I've got all of my aquariums are glass. All of the big ones are glass. That's just what I've always had. One of the first things that people will say to you is, well, you can scratch acrylic a whole lot easier than you can scratch glass. And that's true. But do your aquariums have a lot of scratches on them? Mine don't. I mean, mine are all glass, but still, it's not something I worry about. Like, oh my God, this there's going to be a scratch. I don't. I don't worry about that. So that wouldn't be something that would concern me. I, okay. Here's what I'm going to tell you. If I was building a plywood aquarium like Troy Holler from Cichlid Bros is doing right now, he will be fighting Lucas Bretz, by the way. That has, that has been announced. Um, he's building a large plywood aquarium right now. If I was doing that, and building my dream aquarium, which would be like 20 by eight by eight. Hmm. I will never have this aquarium, but to get a 20 foot by eight foot panel, I don't even think you can get that in glass. You would almost have to go acrylic. And for something like that, I would be perfectly okay with that. I don't know. There's something about the big tanks 
that acrylic joint, something about those scare me. I know they're strong. I know they're just as strong as silicone. John, why would you be more confident in a piece of rubber sticking the two corners together? Why would that bring you more confidence than acrylic? I don't know. But for some reason, the big tanks, 400, 500 gallon tanks that are acrylic, that are, I don't know, the joints just freak me out. I'm just being honest with you. Um, so for me personally, you asked where I stand, all of the tanks in this fish house would tell you I stand with glass. Mm -hmm. And mainly because we work with custom aquariums and that's what they do. And also because that's just how it's worked out. I like glass better just because I have had to deal with cleaning so many of those little beta tanks that there is a difference in my opinion as far as keeping them looking fresh. They kind of come across to me more as cloudy without the water being cloudy, but the actual acrylic part seems a bit cloudy sometimes well, unless you're constantly cleaning it. I also, I, I've got the big flippers in every one of these big tanks, the magnetized flippers that have the scraper on one side and the sponge on the other. I like using that scraper. When you get that real stubborn green algae that won't just rub off, I like to use that scraper and you can't do that with acrylic. You can't take a, I like to use on my tank in the house, uh, one of those razor blade scrapers that you put on the end of a handle and you can scrape like your inspection sticker off your car and stuff. I like to use those in an aquarium. You can't do that on an acrylic. But I don't like it when you do that with that aquarium because my shrimp like to eat the algae. Well, You're like, I don't like it. It doesn't look good. Why don't good. we move that tank into your office then so that you can look at it in all of its nastiness all day? That's not nasty. It's very nasty. That is not nasty. This is the way Need I like aquariums to, to look, lady. Then why, do you, why did you plant the aquarium? I was planning on taking care of it and I was going to keep it looking nice. You, on the other hand? My shrimp love that Your algae. husband doesn't. Okay, so you redid it, and how does it look now? Because I stopped taking care of it altogether because you decided you were going to take care of it now, and now what? I was going to get it back to looking good. I you never did. said I was taking over it fully. You didn't tell me you needed me to. I, did, I never uh, told you I needed should, you to to begin we with. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you voluntarily took over that tank. I did not ask you to. You did it because you're a good and person. And I loved it the way it was. A heavily planted tank with filtration doesn't need a crap ton of uh, water changes. It can be fine without it. And the shrimp were the eating The water isn't all the problem. It. The water's nice and clear. It's the green algae from top to bottom on the glass that's the problem. And every time it would get clean, the poor shrimp were like sad. They were like, we wanted to eat it. <laughs> well, if they did a better job, then I would have left it alone. But I had to scrape it off. And guess what? I used one of those razor blade scrapers to get it off of there because it makes quick work of it. And I couldn't do that with an acrylic. I mean, I suppose you could, but you'd have to be so careful that it just wouldn't be worth it. You'd have, to, I mean, no. I like things to be as easy as possible and acrylic is not. So there you go. Mm -hmm. Christopher Scott and super, super, super lit glitter sunny. Oh, cute. Sorry, I struggled with that so much, Super but my eyes aren't so good. Glitter, sunny, cute. <laughs> Welcome to the team. Uh, so excited to have you. Make sure you watch those videos on Sundays, the extra videos. Melissa Jeswald, my invert only tank is all set. I want RCS, red cherry shrimp. Is that what that stands for? But it's too cold yeah, to ship. Yeah, the ones that are in the Izzy tank that really like algae. You can have all of them. Melissa, we will ship them to you. We'll ship them out tomorrow. No, because <laughs> we can't ship it on Friday. Uh, we'll ship them out to you next week. All I of the shrimp from Jerry my tank. Gobel and Zen too. Uh, she lives up north though, so I don't know that we should ship those now. But we got some shrimp for you, Melissa. Trust me, we we can take care of that, mm -hmm. um, and they can become your problem and stop being my problem. They're not a problem. <laughs> we'll send you guppies too. The shrimp aren't <laughs> the problem. My wife 
babying the shrimp and letting them have too much algae, she's the problem, not me. Anyways, I just like... Not the my, shrimp, I I mean. like the shrimp being happy and reproducing. Plastic razor blades, yeah. I mean, those, those are... Uh, okay, Is that listen. what you would use? I'm, I'm a for... man. I use real blades, okay? Oh, here we go. But I suppose if you wanted to be that way, I suppose you could get the plastic ones, but, you know... 125 versus 150 long tank. Which one should I get? This is one that there could be a rather nice debate on. Because me personally, I love the extra height of the 150. Uh, the 150 that we had, that we ended up selling to Dave's brother. Oh. I loved that tank. It's 30 inches tall. There's something about a 30 inch tall aquarium. You want to know what it's about? Look at the two tanks behind Lisa. Those are 30 inch tanks and you can't really see them because her head is covering them up. But that You're trying tall, to say I have a big head now? No, not at all. That tall of a <laughs> tank is absolutely perfect. Do I like this one? Yeah, of course I do. This one's mm. 24 inches. I like that one. The 30 inches, it just makes such a difference, especially if you have fish that are tall, like angels, discus. You cannot go wrong with a 30 inch tank. That and one, I don't know. These ones are just so hard for me to get into. That's a fact. They are harder to deal with because getting down to the bottom of them, you got to get in the daggone thing. So there's truth to that. They're a little bit more difficult to, to work on, but you know, you set it up in a way where you don't have to work on the bottom of the tank all that often, like I did, yeah. and you're good to go. And I, I just love it. I think that height of an aquarium is so much better. I than, wouldn't want to take care of it if it was a planet tank. Oh, that tank is a planted tank would be a nightmare. Well, I mean, oh, never mind. I don't want to say anything about mm -hmm. mine. <laughs> you don't want to say anything about your tank that's 30 inches tall? Well... I have two occupants right now in that tank, but you probably will never guess who they are. And they're, they're the not happiest. What you think. They're the happiest little fellas in there. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we need a ref. John versus Lisa is happy. Ha, hap, hape live on stream. Hap. Hape live on stream over John's nasty algae tank. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> y'all got to understand we talk to each other like this all the time. It's funny. We're not oh, yeah. mad at each other. We <laughs> break each other's like balls. This. We have fun. He's my best friend. My wife doesn't have balls either. She's got, she's got those balls. Like, she's a <laughs> ballsy woman, but she doesn't have balls because, no. you know. Anyway, nope. <laughs> dig that hole deeper, John. Why don't you just keep digging? <laughs> <laughs> uh, when are we going to see that tank again, Lisa Marie? What tank? That one. Well, John, what am Don't I waiting you dare. for? Don't you dare. What am Don't I waiting dare. for? I, there's one more step I need to do. So you're I've telling been, me when I cut that thing for you, yeah, it, you're going to have it done that day. Lights, everything done that day. Oh, yeah. No, so I gotta do the me. lights now. No, nah, you need me to do the lights <laughs> because you the see? lights have to hang from the ceiling. So I'm waiting on you for the one thing, because always somebody else. There is a whole lot that needs to be done between that and the lights, but I can do it in one day. But I can't do it until that part is done it'll take you five minutes i'll get that done and then you'll find something else to blame let me read my favorite comment i've ever seen ever on this on our uh, live streams my favorite video on your channel was when you visited the shed aquarium and redid your cichlid tank after your son graduated the navy oh oh you mean the tank that's right behind lisa there yeah that's the one thank you for that. I don't know how much I just took you off camera. You probably uh, did it on purpose. No, I just wanted to show the tank. <laughs> That's one of my favorite videos too. Um, that yeah, video. I love that tank. Video. That video for some reason did really well. Like it, it, it performed very well for us. Uh, it's a beautiful tank. I'm very proud of it. 
and uh, and it is a fact. I got the inspiration from that tank at Shed, and I was so worried that I hadn't gotten footage of that tank, and I was so relieved when I s combed through my footage and found that uh, that I had it because that tank was. was I, I, I loved it, it in its gnarliness. It was, it had algae and it had stuff, and it was not. It didn't even look like that. Like it, it's probably been that way for 20 years, but. Like my rocks in there, th th here's the truth, folks. I'm gonna show you a little bit. I'm putting Lisa off to the side a little bit. I promise you this, I'm not telling you a story. This is a fact, my wife can back me up on this. I have not once, not with a toothbrush, not with a sponge like this that for some reason is sitting right in front of me, I have never touched those rocks since putting them in that tank. And oh, look how yeah. good they look. There's not a drop of algae on them. And that you know doesn't why? make sense because there's a window right there. Because the Mbuna's eating it. Because they like algae too. Possibly, but... Uh, what do you think the babies are eating in there? Well, they might be eating the stuff that's in the bottom. Those rocks look so good. And I, I'm still so... Th it doesn't even... It looks fake. I love it. I love it so much. Uh, yeah, the ones in the peacock tank look good too. But they look better in the yellow lab tank. Um, and yeah. I've never done anything to keep them looking that way. I do water changes in that tank. Water changes are very easy in that tank. It's so low maintenance. I don't even know what to tell you. The, at Shed, the rocks were so black and full of algae. And I loved that look. But I'm sure that aquarium has been running for so many years. It's just aged too. When did I do that tank? It would have been... Last year. It was a while after we got back from his graduation. Yeah, he graduated in September of, of 22. 22. So I probably did it in probably a year ago. Yeah. Probably. Because uh, you did them back to back. Yeah. And it, I mean, it, it looks as perfect as it did the day I put them in. I, I, I haven't touched them. Not once. So, and, and the funny thing is, I kind of want them to be dirty. I, I know that sounds weird, but if they're clean like that, it doesn't necessarily look natural. Yeah. It looks like somebody piled up a bunch of rocks in the back of an aquarium. I wanted them to get gnarly and have some life on them and not look perfect, but they've just stayed perfect. Uh, it's not a problem, but yeah, I love that tank. Thank you. Whoever that was, I, I didn't, uh, didn't catch the name. Thank you, whoever said that, because... I'm very proud of that tank. It's my favorite one that I have. I love this one, but these fish make me mad because they have too many big poops. My favorite right now is the 125 with the angels and... Oh, the light's off. Yeah. This tank, uh, you, you're not going to really be able to see it because the lights are off. You can kind of see it. This one here, the plants in that tank are so thick. It, it's unbelievable, and it all started with just a few little ones. That I just kept uh, propagating and not siphoning the substrate or doing anything like that, just letting it do its thing. I've never fertilized it. I've never used root tabs or anything. I just let the fish be the fertilizer. Yeah, it's, it, and it looks amazing. Uh, we have the lights on a timer, and I reset the timer yesterday or yes. Tuesday. Yesterday, one of those days. And uh, no, it was yesterday because it was when we were filming the videos. Right. So, yeah, that tank looks amazing, too. Uh, OK, OK, I'm going to ignore that one. Somebody said uh. something about Shed Aquarium being a couple of miles from their house. There was only one thing about Shed Aquarium that I was quite disappointed about. And I don't think it's Shed's fault. That they only had like one discus? No, they had an Asian arowana. Oh. And it was the very first. I've been dreaming about these fish for 30 years. It was the very first Asian arowana I've ever seen in my life in person. And it looked terrible. Do you mm. remember seeing it? Mm. It was sitting in the back corner of a tank. All you could see was its face. It looked like a dinosaur sticking its head out of a little cave. 
and it just looked like it had just been annihilated. I, I was not, I was not happy. So unhappy, in fact, that I don't even count it as actually seeing my first Asian arowana. I'm just like, that one didn't count. <laughs> Next time I see one, I don't know when that's going to be because, you know, our governments are stupid and don't let us have them. Um, hmm. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know when I'm ever going to see one, but I'll say it. I've said it so many times before the day Asian arowanas become available for sale in the United States and they're legal. I'm buying one. I don't care how much it costs. I don't care how mad you get at me. Where are you going to put it? I'm not going to be I'll find somewhere. Okay. It's going somewhere. Wow. Well, I hope you get a tank first. I know one it could go in today. No. <laughs> Oh, we've got a three-year-old in the in the chat. That's fun. I love that. I love when three-year-olds show up. Yeah. Uh, what schooling fish would you guys recommend for a Jack Dempsey and a 125? <laughs> you silly goose! Don't you know that's not going to happen? I mean, I, well, I suppose I suppose there could be some. Jack Dempseys are one of those fish you you just don't know. It could be a complete tank annihilator, or it could be a tank a fish that never bothers anybody uh they they need to be bigger they need to be fast if you need a schooling fish i'm gonna say giant danios mm. i like giant danios they're super fast <laughs> stephen p makes a good point schooling snacks that's right could be uh giant danios they don't get as big as jack dempsey's they're not giant but they're giant compared to other danios and they get big enough where a Jack Dempsey's not going to swallow them whole. And they're fast enough where a Jack Dempsey's probably just going to give up chasing them around. Uh, Jack Dempsey's can be faster than you would think, but they ain't going to catch Daniels. Uh, I like the drip idea because every minute you spend with the fish is building relationships. What are we talking about here? Ooh. This one's a good one. Ooh, this is a good one. We'll say it. Higgin Hill Design said, how about a huge dart tournament with fish tubers? Ooh. Oh, I'm in on that. Boss Aquatics, if you're here, I will fight you on that dartboard. <laughs> that I will take on Boss Aquatics. Me too. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and say that I'll beat anybody at darts, but I will play anybody at darts. Let's do it. Let's do it in Dallas. I was kicking some butt last night with those triple 20s. She hitting. went on a roll last night, I, and I was like, was oh, no. Two at a time in the triple 20. You were like, oh, I'm so scared. Anybody that plays <laughs> darts will know this is impressive. She hit a 140 followed by a 121. And I was like, what has happened here? Yeah, like, you were what scared. drug are you taking? Because I want some. You were like in the 300 still, and I was down to 17. <laughs> it was brutal. I, I had <laughs> never been more impressed in my life. <laughs> Ballast shark school, but you would want a big tank, a really, really, really big tank. Uh, just ask Evan Rifkin, and oh, look how big yeah. his tank is that he's got he's his got ballast sharks beautiful in. Beautiful tanks. His tanks are so nice, and he's built a lot of them too. I think some yeah. of his own. Boss Aquatics begins designing a boxing ring that looks like a, <laughs> a dartboard. <laughs> No, I'm not talking about that kind of a fight against Boss Aquatics. Uh, again, I'm not saying I'd beat anybody, but uh, but I will. I'll play anybody. Uh, does the more plants you put in the tank mean the less fish you can fit in the tank? Absolutely not. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, the plants are going to fill it up, and you can make it to a point where you know they don't really leave a whole lot of room for fish to swim around. But uh, but some fish like it. They love to just be able to go through there and hide and do all that stuff. I mean, I've seen tanks before that, like, you can't see anything but plant. And those, you know, why would you want fish in there? Well, that's but, like my bowls that Diana and I did. I don't have fish in those bowls. I only yeah, have shrimp. It's only so shrimp. thick in there. Yeah. I'm setting up a 20 gallon and I'm planning on transferring my fish over from my 10 gallon. Any tips on transferring from one tank to another? Yeah, don't make a big deal out of it. I know that's not what you wanted to hear, but what a lot of people do in scenarios like that is overthink 
Like, oh my God, okay, I have to do this absolutely perfect. This, this has to be perfect. And that no, just here's what you do. You take a net, you scoop it up from this tank, you move it over here, you put it in that tank. You're done. Uh, it doesn't need to be a big theatrical, big thing. Um, you know, ideal situation would be that the new tank is a cycled tank. They are the same temperature, of course. Um, I'm assuming that they are. It's really not a big deal. Do not think that you need to take the fish out and drip acclimate them into the new water. No, scoop them out, put them in the new tank, and enjoy your fish in your new tank. It's not a big deal. Cycle oh. the 20-gallon with media from the 10-gallon and just move them up. Now, see, yeah, uh, Myrdoc, uh, I still haven't learned how to say that name. See, that's, that's a different question. If you're asking, take me through the process A to B, the whole thing, then I would agree with that 100%. Yeah, the easier ways to get that 20-gallon running faster is to take as much media as you can from the 10, move yeah. it over to the other one, bring all of that beautifulness over there, and, uh, and, and get the cycle started, yeah. But uh, for some reason, my brain is telling me it was already cycled. I don't know if I read into that wrong, but if they're both cycled already, uh, don't make a big deal out of it. Just move the fish. It's not a big deal. You're not going to kill it. Here's a really good question because I wanted to bring it up. Um, Jamie Green asked, are you guys going to be here in Raleigh for the AGA? And we are not going to be there. We had, I had really wanted to go, but my daughter ended up planning Izzy's birthday party the exact same time. And I can't miss her first birthday. So we will not be at the AGA this weekend, but if anybody is in the Raleigh, North Carolina area, or if you want to drive a few hours to get there, I recommend going to the AGA in Raleigh this weekend. It's, I think it started today, Friday, and it's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and they have an auction on Sunday. So definitely go to that if you can. Murdoch or Murdoch, either one. Okay, it's going to be Murdoch because I like the A-Team. And that was my favorite character on the A-Team. So there you go. Remember Murdoch from the A-Team? The yeah. original A-Team, not the new one with Bradley Cooper, which wasn't bad. Wasn't it Bradley Cooper that played Face? I don't, um, I don't watch it. And I forget who played Murdoch, but I'm talking about the TV show, Murdoch. I had the action figure and everything and Mr. T and it was, I loved the A team back then. So you're going to be Murdoch from this point on. And here, here's the nine year old again. Yay. Aren't you having so much fun? Um, uh, how do I block? I'm going to, you're getting banned. I just don't remove. I don't no. understand what how is do I ban Zen ban him, <laughs> ban him. Yeah. Hide user on this channel. I mean, I, I, it took me two seconds to do it. See you later. Grow up and then you can come back. I um, figured it out. Speaking of cycling, I'm fairly new. I took a sponge filter from my cycled 60-gallon tank and put it in a 5-gallon nano. I get ammonia and then nitrates. Uh, have not seen nitrites. Is that okay? Well, if you're getting ammonia, then... It's not like you're ready for fish right now. I mean, if ammonia is present, your tank's not cycled. So you did a good thing taking that filter, the sponge from a 60 gallon. That's smart. That, that's a brilliant move. Um, but you need to give it a little bit more time uh, because you should have your nitrates, but you should have absolutely no ammonia whatsoever. There isn't enough uh bacteria built up in there yet to convert that ammonia to nitrite than the nitrate so let it do its thing and then you'll be all right yeah. i love how the bikers are named after the harry potter characters thank you i think that's pretty genius too the oscars themselves should be uh should be characters too but um yeah i have i still don't have names for the oscars I might name them I after you named one of them Hermione or whoever her name was. No, because I don't know if they're males or females, although I don't no. know that about the bikers either. But uh, but I do. I don't think I've ever told anybody this. And I'm so glad somebody brought up names for my fish. And I'm going to ask y'all, where's the other one? 
I'm going to give y'all, there's one. There's one of my gold severums right there. Oh, yeah. And the old se gold severum, the other gold severum, not old. They're both the same age. Got them at the same time. And they're a breeder pair. Those two, little movie trivia for you. Those two are named after one of my favorite characters from a movie that I watched recently, and I forgot how much I freaking love that movie. You named them? Yeah. Oh. Their names are Gypsy and Ranger. Somebody please let me know. Hmm. You don't know the answer to this. You might know because of David, maybe. No, I don't know. Okay. Uh, Gypsy and Ranger. Hmm. Gypsy Ranger. Where did that come from? Um, and there are, there are the other three that I could name the Oscars, but I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. Uh, I guess I could name the Oscars category three, four, and five, but I'm not going to do that. But somebody tell me where Gypsy Ranger is from. Hmm. 18 was a good show. You daggone right it was. Of course it was. It was great. I love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> you have two grandbabies under one year old. Yep. We yep. certainly do. And a five-year-old and a two-year-old. Two boys, two girls. And baby cat looks like me. They call her Catalisa instead of Catalina. They call her what? Catalisa. Catalisa. <laughs> <laughs> Long-time listener, first-time caller. I love seeing that. You know why? Because that's what people say to radio shows. My wife named her Chili Oscar after Kevin Bacon from Footloose. Oh, oh I love Footloose. What was Footloose. his name on Footloose? I am totally forgetting. Um, I don't know, but I really like that movie. Ooh, he got it. Nico Fish. I'm pretty sure that's the first one. Yeah, that was the, uh, that was um, Jax Teller's Jaeger on Pacific Rim. I love that movie so much. If you haven't seen Pacific Rim, Daggone it, you're missing out on a great movie. Um, uh, I've seen Ethan Fulford is asked about the breeder boxes. Um, I, I've seen it, the question before, but he says, I'm, oh, whoops. Do you Ram, recommend, there it is. Do you recommend fish breeding boxes? What are your thoughts on them? If you have live bears, you know, you want to save your babies from getting eaten, like your platies or guppies or something, then they're fine. There's nothing wrong with them. They're beneficial if you need them. I don't have I don't have anything bad to say about breeder boxes and uh, Murdoch's now that I know your name you are right it's gypsy danger I'm sorry it's been a while uh, that's that's my bad it, it is it's not ranger it's gypsy danger I had a brain fart there that's my bad toot. but hey a listen toot. Uh, what was his name Nico fish still got it he knew he knew from gypsy ranger when it's actually gypsy danger he still knew hmm. uh, and it's 923, so I'm going to go ahead and tell you all another movie recommendation. And listen, I don't care what anybody says, okay, including this beautiful woman sitting across from me who's going to have a big problem with what I'm about to Come say. Come on, you're not going to talk about that movie, I are am. you? Why? I'm going to give you a movie recommendation that is a good movie, and I don't care what anybody... So many people on YouTube are ripping it up because... I refuse to watch it. Well, I told you that it's not a good thing. The New Roadhouse. No. I don't care what anybody says. That is a good movie. You is can't. it the best movie I've ever seen? No. Do I appreciate it as much as I did the first one? Of course not, because that, that movie... I mean, that was like a Bible for me growing up. I love Patrick Swayze. I love Jeff Healy. I love the whole thing. The Sam Elliott. I love all of it. You can't Otis Redding playing in the background. You can't replace. I Patrick love Swayze. the original Roadhouse. What I said to her after I watched it, I said, that movie would have been so much more successful and so much better received if they just hadn't named it Roadhouse. If they would have named it anything else it would have been so much more successful but so many more so many people are poo-pooing it because the original was so good the original wasn't even a good movie let's be honest yes it was it's not it but it's i love it i love the movie mm. but it's not like 
you, Godfather. I mean, it's not like, like a... like redoing The Wizard of Oz or something. You just don't do it. You I don't agree. You redo movies that have Patrick Swayze in it. I agree. He was they should favorite. have just named it something else. Oh, everybody that's saying that it's good, I'm going to put you in timeout. <laughs> Even if you're a member. I'm Listen. Putting, you, all of you are going to go in timeout. People don't give <laughs> Jake Gyllenhaal enough credit. That guy is a master. He is so good. Mm. And he's so good in that movie. He is nothing like the Dalton from the original. His, he doesn't even have the same name. His name's Dalton, but his first name's Elwood in the new one. It's, it's nothing like the original. Then they should have named it something else. That's all I'm saying. There's only a couple things that are... I'm not going to spoil anything, but kind of similar. The girl brings him breakfast that one morning. And <gasps> are you... You are ruining it for people that haven't even watched it. I'm, that's not... A, are you crazy? That's not a spoiler. Now they all know he's going to get breakfast. He gets... The girl... The girl bartender brings him breakfast and... He, in the original, he was naked. He's not naked in this one. Sorry, now nobody ladies. wants to watch it. <laughs> but he is in his underwear. There's that. And then there's the fact that the big shot, you know, big time assassin guy that came into the original Roadhouse halfway through, just like Conor McGregor comes in halfway through this one. Same. That's the only same thing. Wow. Conor was... Connor, Connor McGregor, oh, I love. Sorry, you're spoiling it, for, spoiling it for everybody who hasn't watched it. He's a terrible actor, but his character was great in that movie. It was, it was a fun movie to watch. I'm then sorry. They should have named it Street House. I, I'm telling you, anything else, if they had just named it like The Cooler, the the Bouncer, it would have been so much better. And then renamed the bar. Nobody would have made comparisons to Roadhouse. Nobody would have. Because it's nothing like it. Okay, he drives a crappy car because he knows people are going to hurt it. But he's not driving a fancy Mercedes like he does in the original. Oh, see? Why don't you just say what brand pants he was wearing? And I don't know what brand pants he was wearing. brushes his hair in the morning and what he ate for dinner. And he had a breakfast burrito. That's what the girl brought him, if you, if you really uh, want to know. It's, it's a good movie. There... It's a. I had a lot of fun with it. I don't know what you want me to tell you. The original Roadhouse should not have been remade. Uh, it just they just shouldn't have done it. I just want to know. Just tell me this: Was there a fish tank in the bar? No. It's not worth watching. I mean. But they did have the fencing around the band so that they don't get hit with beer bottles and stuff. They did have that. <sighs> But it wasn't Jeff Healy because he passed away, unfortunately. It was a bunch of different bands. Uh, it, it, they should have just named it something else. Uh, I want to see the Beetle, Beetlejuice sequel. I do too. And that's different. That's a sequel to a classic starring the same people. With They're now going to have, what's her name, Jen, Jen, Ortega, Jenna Ortega? Is she from... Playing uh, Winona Ryder, Ryder's daughter, I think. Oh, from uh, Wednesday. From Wednesday, yeah. yeah perfect. Like, That's like perfect Wednesday. casting. Her character in Wednesday is Winona Ryder's character from Beetlejuice. I mean, it's perfect. Mm. So she's going to be great in that. And give me a break. If you don't think Michael Keaton was great as Beetlejuice, then you're just he was. not living in the right world. He was uh, so I'm looking forward to that one a lot. I was not looking forward to, the, to Roadhouse, even though I love Jake Gyllenhaal. Um, but I watched it and I loved it. I, it was so much fun. <gasps> they're going to do another Goonies? You can't do that. No, they're not. You, uh -huh. you can say yeah. that, Mr. Skippity Doodah. They've been talking about that forever. It's not going to happen. Well, they did they're a second Christmas story. I was like, uh, with if them they, growing up. That if they weird. do a new Goonies, this I can promise you. I will not watch it. I don't care. Why, John? Why I don't care if Leo it? DiCaprio plays mouth because, let's face it, Corey Feldman's too busy singing his terrible Michael Jackson music. I don't care if they bring in Jake Gyllenhaal to play Mikey. and they. I don't care. I don't care if they bring the best actors in the world. I will not watch that. I, I won't do it. Tombstone remake? Are you kidding me? No. Yeah. There's... There's movies that are untouchable. There's movies that are good that they have not re, like redone or done sequels to. Goonies is one of them. 
Uh, E.T. is another one. Like, oh, there's can't. movies that are just yeah. untouchable. Yeah. And there's movies that should have been untouchable. Like Roadhouse. Well, I'll give you that. But the new one was good. Michael Keaton was the best Batman. No, how dare you? You're saying that just to <laughs> piss me off. <laughs> but who was the best? Um, who I'm going to say it, and I don't care what anybody says. Ben Michael, Affleck was the best Batman, no, period. No, who does Michael Rosenbaum play? Lex Luthor. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah, oh, he's not arguing that because he knows better. Oh, yeah. He knows better than to argue that because we all know Michael Rosenbaum's the best Lex Luthor to ever be put on film. But, uh, but yeah, Ben Affleck was the best. Well, Ben Affleck was the best Bruce Wayne. Ben Affleck and I think was, was the probably, best at everything. Ben Affleck's just great. I, I like that guy so much. I like Keanu Reeves better. Um, you know, remember the movie he played in with Patrick Swayze? Yeah, there was... I bet you don't remember this, the singer from the band that was in that movie, too. Really popular band at the time. Played one of the guys with Patrick Swayze. It was Anthony Kiedis from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. I bet you didn't oh, know that. Oh, yeah, yeah, I knew that. Michael Keaton was the best. Y'all need to just take your opinions and keep them to yourself. Because y'all know. Zen said she'd say it to your face. I think she wants to fight you in the but ring. You know what? I will fight her for saying that. Hmm. I'll I fight got, a woman. I, I got your back, Zen. Michael Keaton. The, uh, oh, come on. Michael Keaton was good. But he wasn't the best Batman. Forget about it. I even liked Robert Pattinson. I thought he did a great job. Because he's the only one that played the sad Bruce Wayne. Everybody else, I mean, Christian Bale was pretty sad, but uh, Christian Bale was great. I recently rewatched all three of those movies. Um, and what a great series of movies those are. I, I've always known that. But, uh, and Dark Knight still is, is going to go down as the best Batman movie that's ever been made. I did not hate the Bane character, even though he sounded like this. I'm a Tom Hardy fan, so I loved him. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, what do you want? What do you want me to tell you? George Clooney was the best Batman. Everybody in this chat right now forgot that George Clooney even played Batman with the nipples really? and everything. The nipples. His bat suit had very pronounced <laughs> nipples. Okay. The Batman and the Robin. <laughs> That's funny. Christian Bale's absolutely insane. Have you seen The Machinist? That's that is probably. Uh, <laughs> the most dedicated I've ever seen an actor to a role, except for maybe the pianist, but those two right there, like, I mean, come on, that's people taking their job very seriously. Hmm. Uh, love Tom Hardy. Yeah. The, the Tommy, Tommy, uh, Connell, isn't that his name? Tommy Connell character on warrior. One wow, of my favorite just skipped right characters. over Zen's, Zen's comment, huh? Yeah, because I don't, I just, it's just not important to me. How, how very dare you, sir, threaten me that. and how don't even have a new you. member badge. Rude. <laughs> See, you're just full of all the fun jabs tonight. You know what, Zen? Send me your picture. You can be the new member badge. That's right. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll that do. Would be I funny. will make we should do that. Ben Affleck's Batman be the, uh, the five-year badge or whatever she's begging for. Four-year badge. I thought Carl was the four-year badge. No. Carl, I thought... Or is, or is Carl three, three years? Uh, Twelve... I think four. Four. Carl's four. Yeah, so you're not even at five yet. So what do you... What's the big deal? You're, you're six did. months away, lady. I don't know. I'm confused now. It has to be that Carl is three because she wouldn't be giving me a hard time if. Why would she be? She's not even there yet. Adam West was the be was the best mayor. The Adam West Batman. I watched those shows every single day as a kid. Uh, I love that Batman. But I mean. You know, I have a cat named Batman. Yeah, I know you do. And a cat named Robin. I grew up with Val Kilmer as Batman. I liked it. He did a good job. Val Kilmer's been good in everything I've ever seen him in. Uh, I just think oh. Batman, back then, you go from Keaton to Kilmer to Clooney. It was just like, come on. Oh, my God. She said Carl is three years, John. You are way behind. 
All right. Well, you know what? You can make them too. Hmm. <laughs> Val was absolutely the best Doc Holiday. Yeah. Didn't Dennis Quaid play him in the other one? I, I completely agree. Val Kilmer absolutely murdered that role. He was awesome. Oh, I love that saying that Allison Dalton just said. I'm your Huckleberry. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of my favorite parts. I'm your Huckleberry. Tombstone's a great movie. If they ever remade it, I would not watch it. But I said the same thing about Roadhouse. So, is Ed streaming tonight? No. He has something going on tomorrow, so he can't stream tonight. Okay. Well, then I guess we're not in a big hurry to get out of here, right? We can no. just keep oh, talking can, about I movies. I want to talk about something real quick because um, I want... Okay, okay. Has anybody ever done 23 and Me? Yeah, I'm going to talk about this. It's a DNA testing thing. I know some people have negative things to say about it. Like, oh, don't do that. You don't want people to have your DNA. I don't really care. So it doesn't bother me. But if you've done it, go check in your DNA relatives and see if you're related to me. Because I did it. Because it seems like everybody's related to yeah, her. Yeah, go. Go. <laughs> if you have done the 23andMe ancestry thing, go in the DNA relatives and see if you're related to Lisa Hudson. And then message me through the app. Because it's the only way you can message me. So <laughs> that would be really cool. And then I'll look and see what percentage cousin you are to me. They've cast. And I'll call you out on the live stream next week. They've cast Matthew <laughs> McConaughey as Doc Holliday this time. Oh, he could do it. And if anybody would know, Jennifer Anderson would know. Uh, but, uh, but no, they haven't. How dare you? They, um, they are not remaking Tombstone. Ooh, Jennifer Anderson did it too. Oh, a lot of people have. You guys go and check and see if you're related to me. It's Lisa Hudson, North Carolina. I put it in there. Quaid played Holiday and Wyatt Earp with Costner. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, yeah, I mean, and listen, Dennis Quaid's a really good actor. I like him a lot. I love The Rookie. Uh, just watched that recently again, too. Um, Val's Jim Morrison. Yeah, listen, Val Kilmer's been really good in everything I've seen, except for that I Island of Dr. Moreau movie. I thought that was kind of stupid, but... Uh, and he's Iceman, so give me a break. I mean, Val Kilmer is great. Um, I just said she just saw my shirt, Joseph. 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 I got a selfie with him. Joe Coy's awesome. I haven't watched The Watchmen recently. That is a great superhero movie. Awesome. One of my absolute favorites, Melissa Jeswald. I will tell you this. And I'm going to say a curse word, but it is how strongly I feel about this. And it's 930 at night, so the kids are in bed and it's okay. Ooh, the must. television show on HBO, The Watchmen, is dog shit. <gasps> it was the worst, dumbest, stupidest, most ridiculous piece of blaspheme I have ever seen put on screen. And Alan Moore is probably suing HBO over such a atrocity. What a terrible, terrible show that was. Wow. And uh, Did it have a smell to it, too? Uh, it was so bad I could smell it through the screen. Wow. Like squids falling from the sky, really? Come on. Really dumb. Uh, they made a mockery out of Rorschach, which I think is horrible. And uh, that it just really, really pissed me off. But Watchmen the movie has one of my favorite scenes of all time which I've talked about on this stream before the jail scene when Rorschach is in jail and he says, I'm not in here with you. You're locked in here with me. That's my favorite scene ever in a movie. Hmm. So yeah, look that up on YouTube. If you haven't seen it yet, how did we go from talking about me and 20 It's Jennifer and Anderson's fault that. and Melissa Jeswald. It's their fault. Just kidding. Everybody. I'm just excited to see if I have new family and if y'all are subscribers, <laughs> I do have 187 distant cousins in Canada. I don't know any of them. But that's what it said. Well, there you go. I'm going to go back to fish because we got a very important question fish? here. Fish? You were talking about <laughs> movies. But it's a question that's the most no-brainer answer of all time. The highest quality food brand for South and Central American cichlids in Ontario, Canada. Go no farther than Toronto. I'm sure it's available in the entire country of Canada. It's North Finn Cichlid, period, or North Finn Jumbo, or North Finn um, Arowana is great for South American cichlids. I've actually talked to the owner about 
coming out with the arowana but putting it under a different name because people won't buy that to feed to oscars because it says arowana oh. uh but in canada arowanas are more famous more popular because they can have asians up there i'm so jealous um so i understand him wanting to have arowana but just make another bag and have it be big cichlid uh but there you go uh North Finn, look it up. We'd sell it to you, but we can't ship it to Ontario. So, Dean Kane was the best Superman. Come on now. Are we being serious with each other now? That, everybody knows. See, whoever said that said it specifically to piss me off. And I take offense to that. Oh. <laughs> because everybody knows it's Christopher Reeve. Come on. It, it, we can't even talk about that. It's not even, it's not even fair to talk about that because it's Christopher Reeve and then it's it's Henry Cavill and I'll say it to your face I, I liked Henry Cavill Superman a lot I wish he was a little happier but oh yeah he was a good he was also good in uh what was that show literally everything he's ever been in with the long blonde hair the witcher yeah oh yeah um if you make the argument that anyone was a better Superman than Christopher Reeve you're just a bad person that's I'll say it to your face because it's it's true. Uh, it, it's there's nobody that's done it or going to do it better than him. They've even brought in a Christopher Reeve clone. And he was good, but he wasn't as good. Brandon Routh was not as good because simply because he looks like Christopher Reeve. He was good, but he had a bad script and a bad movie and it just wasn't wasn't as good as it could have been. And that's not his fault. He did a good job. But he's no Christopher Reeve. Uh, all right. I guess we've got to probably start getting out of here, don't we? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I've got a lot of cats to feed. I'm getting delirious at this point. I've been sitting in this chair all day. All day. Sitting on your butt all day while I've been running around doing everything. We're going we're gonna to do one more trivia. It's <sighs> going to be quick because... This is a very popular movie, and if people don't know the answer to this, there's 36,000 people still in here watching this. If you don't know the answer to this, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be upset. I'm gonna be sad. But I gotta remember it. Oh. Oh shoot! I can't remember it. It's something along the lines of, it has to do with the tone that it's said. You'll get it if you've seen this movie. That's, that's funny. It's not like it wasn't out there all day. I'm sorry, I did that terrible. It's the Burbs. It's Mr. Klopek from the Burbs. Uh, and, and that was a really funny scene. But if you've seen the movie, you know it. Uh, that was a very funny scene. Oh, what about, what about this one? What about this one? Damn. <laughs> That's Kevin Hart. <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny. How much are you guys charging for autographs in Dallas? $31,000 each. No, we don't charge autographs. <laughs> That's, That's ridiculous. No. No. Our, we don't charge for autographs no. because there's no value to our autographs. No. Maybe hers, but not mine. No. Um, we just do it. And if you come up to me, I'm going to take a selfie with you. So just know. I speak two English, two in, two languages, English and bad English. People are getting the burbs, but you didn't get the burbs from what I said. You got it because I blurted it out because I did a horrible job trying to impersonate Mr. Klopek. Yeah, the moving ban. It was out there all day. <laughs> I can't oh talk my like gosh. him. Haven't you seen the burbs? I don't think Your life so. is not complete if you haven't seen the burbs. What an amazing movie. It's great. Well, it sounds annoying. It's Tom Hanks. The way you're doing that. And Corey Feldman, before he went crazy, <laughs> is in that movie. Uh, that's funny. Okay. So we have to go ahead and end this now, folks. Otherwise, we will go all night long. You get me talking about movies, which is what I like to do at the end of streams. And uh, I could go all night. So <sighs> we don't want to do that. Well, but. I, I had wanted to go in and kick your butt at darts. Well, you can keep living that dream till tomorrow. What? We can go in there and do it. We can settle this right now. Oh, Let's yeah. go. We can. <laughs> well, then maybe you should say goodbye to everybody so that I can go teach you how to play darts.
teach me how to play darts. <laughs> Anyways, tonight was fun. It was definitely fun. And don't forget, if you are in the North Carolina area this weekend, go check out the AGA. Um, go see a bunch of awesome people that are going to be there. Um, yeah. Anyways, it's going to be a good show. I know it is. But unfortunately, we won't be there. Um, but anyway, have a wonderful weekend. And thank you, Mods. I'm trying to remember. What do I say? Thank you, Mods. <gasps> oh, we didn't miss any, did we? Uh, Vitaly Gord Gordetsky became a member. Oh, yay. Vitaly, sorry we forgot to uh, welcome you to the team as a new member. Yes. Thank you for that so much. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you for all the super chatters and all of the new members and everybody just hanging out with us in chat. Thank you very much. And we will see you next weekend. No, next Thursday. Thursday. Bye. <laughs>